disaster relief and rescue operation so what is disaster we have been reading about it from the first lecture a situation usually catastrophic dangerous in nature in which a number of people are plunged into helplessness and as a result in need of food clothing shelter medical care and other basic necessities of life right so that is disaster so we have also gone through the various types of disaster that is natural and man made in natural you have various disasters like few examples are given like earthquake floods hurricane volcanic eruption in man made disasters you have chemical disasters riots air crashes industrial accidents warfare major accident be it, be it on land or sea okay then what are the effects of disaster that also we have gone through the various physical effects are death injuries food scarcity homelessness increased risk of communicable disease displacement of population economic destruction is destruction of crops disruption of production set back to economic development correct then what do you mean by the word emergency emergency means a situation actual actual happening or imminent imminent means the sense it is about to happen involving unusual conditions and hazards which if not corrected or prevented could lead to disaster correct so that is emergency any situation which is actually happening or which is about to occur which involves unusual conditions and hazards which if not corrected or prevented could lead to disaster then concept of civil defense basically uh, concept of civil defense is the people responsible we have seen in the institutional framework the various government organizations the various organizations basically which are the four workers or what you say uh, which are responsible basically everyone is responsible to deal with the disaster but officially the work assigned to particular people in that particular department okay so what is the concept behind it self help mutual assistance use of available resources <coughs> in the hour before asking for assistance augmentation of resources by individual volunteers voluntary organizations and general public what can we do about disaster save lives protect survivors reduce the losses help rapid return to normalcy correct rapid return to normal condition what we can do before the disaster strikes have the following flashlight candle matches first aid book and kit transistor radio know how and where to turn off your electricity now few rules when disaster occurs listen and remain tuned to the nearest operating radio station serving your community and carry out the instructions that are given that is the first rule you should be aware of what is happening around you do not use your telephone for anything less than for saving lives because communication is very important when such disaster occurs okay so use your telephone wisely for saving lives in the sense for anything information that you want to dissipate through communication if warning is ignored telephone exchanges will be overloaded and rescue medical and other services will be gravely affected in the efforts okay so do not make the lines busy unless and until it is required in terms of that particular emergency contact your neighbors they may need heal help contact your nearest disaster operation center if you need help or can give help sight seeing is forbidden you will hinder the essential work and traffic and endanger yourself okay if at all there is heavy rainfall okay and there is a condition like flood but since watching the heavy rainfall people start going out for outing for sight seeing they start roaming so that has to be forbidden then functions of the office of self defense that is basically the regular functions the uh, what do you say of of the organizations in such disasters 
to establish and administer a comprehensive national civil defense and civil assistance program to formulate the plans and policies for the protection and welfare of the civilian population in the time of war directly involving other national agencies of equally grave character to estimate the total material manpower fiscal that is some financial requirement for carrying out the civil defense program and allocate to the provinces cities municipalities barangays that is the small local areas such as aid in facilities material funds as may be available from the national government so these are very common and basic functions to develop and coordinate a program for informing educating and training the general public members of disaster coordinating councils and disaster control groups on civil defense and civil assistance measures to furnish guidance to the various provinces cities municipalities and the local areas in the planning organization and operation of their civil defense organization okay to advise the secretary of the national defense on matters concerning the civil defense and make recommendation from time to time as may be deemed appropriate or as the secretary may require to for perform such other duties as may be described by higher authority or provided by law so these are the various functions of civil defense basically if a particular disaster occurs in a particular area according to the institutional framework who is responsible for which type of disaster and which area is uh, all allotted we will not take the word responsible or who is given the who is allotted the um, authority of that particular area in terms of disaster okay so they have to follow all these functions so if you go through the functions these are very common and basic functions that every in that every area where a disaster occurs these functions has to be followed then what are the services that are provided by this civil defense health service which involves medical services and first aid then auxiliary fire services that is help existing the fire departments in operating the fire engines putting out the fires and organizing the fire brigades okay so these are common not related to any particular type of disaster it is common services which are provided depending upon which type of disaster occurs in that particular area then police service that is helps the pnp that is the police services um, in enforcing the traffic regulation prevention of looting and other acts of lawlessness this pnp is actually of given for a particular country it is of the philippines country this short form is okay then emergency transport service operates trucks buses and other means of transportation for hauling supplies civil defense workers injured people evacuates to designated places then communication and warning service provides operate and maintains continuous and reliable communication adequate warning system throughout the period of impending or existing disaster and calamities public information service like providing accurate information and instruction to the civilian population during emergency rescue and engineering service provide teams to save lives by quickly getting people out of damaged buildings and freeing them from the trap or isolation then evacuation service that cares for the homeless distress responsible and the distress responsible for setting up welfare centers for catering accommodation billeting billeting in the sense accommodation that is provided to the soldiers uh, who are at the front who are at the front workers in the in case of disaster emergency clothing registration and inquiry and other assistance of personal nature welfare and rehabilitation service that is provide rapid restoration of well being and morale of the person affected by disaster and emergencies so if you go through this services so those are the relief and rescue operations what we had started with okay we had started with the name of the ppt as relief and rescue operations so civil defense services in which all the departments come beat ntrf beat any uh, government department 
everyone okay so that is a common civil defense uh, people so in that when you go through the services if you go through health service fire service police service emergency transportation service communication and warning service public information service rescue and engineering service evacuation service welfare and rehabilitation service okay so these are all the services that has to be provided by the civil defense in when this particular disaster occurs in any area okay then so disaster relief operations we will go through what are the disaster relief operation when the disaster occurs what are the immediate relief operations that are provided so basically by the end of this lecture you will be able to understand the concept of disaster relief operation we will be able to explain the phases of disaster relief and activities that should be done in each phase now natural disasters as well as the human caused disasters that is man made disaster lead to human suffering and creates needs that the victims cannot alleviate that is cannot cope up without assistance correct when any disaster occurs okay when any disaster occurs or strikes a variety of international organizations offer relief to the affected country it is of course our own uh, nation as well as the help from the international organizations as well each organization has different objectives expertise and resources to offer and several hundred may become involved in a single major disaster in the event of any disaster the government of affected country must conduct needs assessment to determine what emergency is required in that particular area okay that is whenever the disaster occurs of course we have help from various organizations from international organizations as well where, where there are various expertise where there are various equipment resources various things which are available but the first thing what needs to be done is assessment done by the government that in case of such an emergency what actually specific needs are required in that particular type of disaster disaster relief operations are complex and can benefit greatly from careful planning preparedness for providing the relief operations we need to have proper planning and preparedness so that specific amount of relief operation specific requirement of that relief operations is satisfied in that specific type of disaster if you say there is flood and you give priority to the fire brigade of course it is not okay so likewise the priority and what type of requirement is required in that particular area that assessment has to be done improved disaster preparedness can help save lives reduce the suffering of the survivors enable the communities to restart the normal life more quickly right when you have a proper disaster preparedness it can help save lives it can reduce the suffering of the survivors it can enable the communities to restart the normal life more quickly as the efficiency of disaster relief operation is very dependent on the quality of the preparation that you have the efficiency of the disaster relief operation depends upon the the preparedness your preparedness your planning disasters often possess significant health threats that is our first thing which is has to be given the priority okay life of the people one of the most serious concern after a disaster especially the natural disaster is sanitation so what do you mean by sanitation hygiene hygiene in terms of proper water supply proper discharge of the sewage okay so that is sanitation disruption in the water supplies and sewage system can pose serious health risk to victims even if that particular disaster is not linked to any spread of infectious disease but because of the improper water supply improper sanitation the temporary sanitation temporary water supply which is made in that particular area but if it is not proper if there is no proper sanitation one disaster will lead to another disaster that is spread of infectious diseases for example if there is earthquake which is occurring in a particular area so if there is earthquake in you to provide a uh, temporary shelters temporary food supply temporary water sanitation uh, methods right 
uh, I mean this uh, sewage, drainage, all temperate because everything is destroyed in that particular area, correct? So, but if there is no proper sanitation, no hygiene, no cleanliness, no proper uh, implementation of water supplies and sanitary, I mean the sewage supplies. So this earthquake, because of which crowding of the people has happened in particular area and because of which we are providing, uh, you know, people are being provided with the temporary relief aid. But if there is no proper sanitation, this will lead to spread of some communicable disease. So one disaster will lead to another type of disaster if there is no proper relief operation provided. Okay. So disruption in water supplies and sewage system can pose serious health risk to victims because they decrease the amount and quality of available drinking water and create difficulties in waste disposal. Drinking water can be contaminated by breaks in sewage lines or presence of animal cadavers in the sense animal dead bodies in water source. These factors can facilitate the spread of disease after a disaster. Providing potable that is pure drinking water to victims, to the affected people and adopting alternative methods of sanitation that is sewage disposal. Of course the waste disposal as well, the solid waste disposal must be a priority after disaster. So that has to be the priority so that one disaster should not lead to growth of another disaster that is spread of disease. Food shortages are often an immediate health consequence of disaster. Food shortages. Existing food stocks may be destroyed or disruption to distribution system may prevent the delivery of food. Correct, this happens, be it flood, be it earthquake, okay, be it volcano, whatever, where people are affected, the whole area is affected. Food shortage is the common thing. This may lead to malnutrition or death of by hunger, especially in population which are particularly susceptible to malnutrition, such as children under 5 years of age and pregnant women. So they are more prone to malnutrition and to you know hunger related problems i mean death of hunger if there is no proper food supply as well so these are the things which are supposed to given priority that is whenever a disaster occurs providing them shelter providing them proper sanitation water supply food supply right then health risk of disaster disaster can also cause disruption to the healthcare infrastructure correct if an earthquake is occurring in a particular area, it is only going to—is it only going to affect the residential buildings? No. In that area, whatever the property is is going to get damaged. For example, the healthcare infrastructure. If there is an hospital nearby, it is going to be affected. If there is flooding in a particular area, and suppose flooding is so much that the hospital property, the building is also affected, it has then it is disruption of the healthcare infrastructure as well, right? So. Hospital and health centers may suffer structural damage, correct? Or health personnel may be among the casualties. That is health personnel, people working inside the hospitals, that is the doctors, the nurses, the other people. They might also be the victim. They might also be the patient of that disaster. They might also be the part of that disaster, right? So it will limit the ability to provide health service to disaster victims, correct? Emergency health kits that contain essential medical supplies and drugs are often provided to victims as part of the immediate response to disaster. So the immediate response to disaster in terms of the health risk providing emergency health kits is the main thing which has the basic essential medical supplies and drugs. So natural disasters do not usually result in infectious disease outbreaks. However, certain circumstances can increase the chance of disease transmission. Disasters do not purposely <coughs> lead to infectious diseases, but the circumstances after that particular disaster can lead to disease transmission like I gave you the example. Immediately after a disaster, most increases in the disaster incidents are caused by fecal contamination of water and food supplies. The waste, the human waste because of which contamination of water occurs. Okay, so that 
most incidences are observed because of that contamination of water this contamination usually results in intestinal diseases outbreaks of communicable diseases are directly associated with population density and displacement they are directly associated right outbreak of any disease any communicable disease is associated with population density that is amount of people living in that particular area basically crowding of the people and how the displacement of the people is done from area to area if there is crowding of the people and spread of communicable disease and if there is displacement of people again then again the spread of the disease will happen correct so that depends upon the, i mean the outbreak or the spread of these such diseases communicable diseases or we can say contagious diseases are associated with population density and displacement if disaster victims that is people affected in the disaster live in overcrowded conditions or are forced to leave their homes the risk of a disease outbreak increases and increased demand on water and food supplies elevated risk of contamination and disruption of the sanitation services all contribute to the risk of disease outbreak the medical kits like the health kits which we were talking about that are supposed to be given to the affected people since healthcare infrastructure is also affected so these medical kits are designed to meet the primary healthcare needs of the people without access to medical facilities primary at first stage the medical supply to be provided uh, to the people for that this medical kits are to be required when such disaster occurs each kit covers the needs of around 10000 people for 3 months unless and until it is uh, the severity of the health issue is too much okay for them of course a treatment is required in the hospital but the basic uh, diseases or the basic health problems can be treated with this basic kit that are supposed to be provided to the people affected with the disaster the 12 essential drugs in the basic kit include anti inflammatories and antacid a disinfectant oral dehydration salts and anti malarial a basic antibiotic effective against most common bacteria and an ointment for eye infection so such basic items okay which we usually have it in our homes as well okay but in large quantity and more amount of the regular items i mean regular essential medical items are provided are in that particular medical health kit these medicines can treat the most common illness in disaster victims so these are most common illness which are more common also when disaster occurs okay they can treat them so that every person does not have to run for hospital so these medicines can treat the most common illness of disaster victims such as anemia that is less of blood less of hemoglobin pain diarrhea fever respiratory respiratory tract infections eye and ear infections measles and skin conditions the basic kit also includes simple medical supplies like cotton soap bandages thermometers some medical instruments health cards and record books and items to help create a clean water supply so in not just the medical drugs or the medicines the other things as you know the kit usually contains all these things okay so the same way the kit which is provided to the disaster victims that also contains these all things in the longer term after a disease after a disaster sorry the risk for vector borne diseases increases that is spread by some vector some agent okay so in the longer term after a disaster the risk of vector borne diseases increases vector borne diseases are spread to humans by insects and other anthropods such as ticks or mosquitoes right communicable diseases that is person to person that is called the communicable diseases but there is possibility of such vector borne diseases also spread by some agents vector borne diseases are of particular concern following heavy rains and flood mostly after heavy rain after floods you could see this spread of vector borne diseases insecticides may be washed away from the buildings whatever insecticides may be might have been spread on the buildings that would be washed away 
and number of mosquito breeding sites may increase during disaster relief it's needed to provide valuable supplies and personnel to victims and help to minimize the social economic and health consequences of disaster correct it is very much important to provide this valuable supply and people to help the victim health concerns such as potential disease outbreak malnutrition poor sanitation should be addressed immediately after a disaster to avoid the serious health consequences then when you talk about this disaster relief operations that is the when this all things what we were talking about providing proper sanitation water supply food supply proper health kits you know all this comes under the disaster relief operations okay so there are phases of disaster relief particularly with disaster relief it's important to remember that the opportunity to make a difference does not end when media coverage dies down basically very important thing to be remembered is when a disaster occurs in any particular area the media coverage is very high so it's not that just for the media coverage the disaster relief operation are to be provided it is the responsibility to provide such relief operations to the victims and not a show off correct because as the condition comes to normal see as the condition comes to normal see the media coverage in that particular area decreases if you see now also when there is particular disaster say flooding in mumbai or say floods in any other part of the country heavy rainfall in any part of the country okay so media coverage is very high okay but after this monsoon or how the people you know have recovered from that particular flood what help was provided how the relief operations were okay that also will be covered to some what extent but later when the normal sea comes to that particular area when that particular come area comes in its normal condition some preparation would be done in that area what is called the planning in order to overcome such type of disaster in the future okay so at that time the media coverage will be lowest or will not be there to show the preparation or the planning prior to such disaster okay but this relief operation or the work towards this disaster has to be done throughout be it during the disaster or be it after the disaster and not for media coverage now rather there are four phases of relief work from the first which begins as soon as the disaster strikes through the fourth continuing the efforts of future prevention and risk reduction so there are four phases of disaster relief operation the first is when the disaster strikes and the fourth is the preparation for future okay so the four phases of disaster relief the first phase begins immediately focusing on restoring the order of the area restoring the affected area immediately after the disaster occurs phase 2 quickly follows as residents work towards stabilization and a return to daily activities phase 3 and phase 4 are marked by community led rebuilding and ongoing preparedness education in order to mitigate the future catastrophe future danger future disaster by building better and creating an informed population so if you could see here phase 1 which is called the immediate phase 2 which is called the intermediate phase 3 which is called the long term relief operation and phase 4 which is disaster preparedness relief operation okay time frame goal services and media coverage everything is given here so time frame the phase 1 that is immediately following a disaster the phase 1 that is immediate relief operation they last from you know days of disaster to week after that from several days to week after that the phase 2 that is intermediate relief operation it 
it is around weeks after the disaster that is six months to one year after that disaster phase 3 that is the long term relief operation that is weeks and months after a disaster 1 to 15 years after that disaster phase 4 which is disaster preparedness it is the ongoing and continuous process in that area what is the goal of phase 1 that is immediate relief operation short term triage to establish the order immediate actions phase 2 intermediate what is the goal stabilization making the condition stable phase 3 that is long term what is the goal rebuilding for better future and phase 4 which is disaster preparedness the goal is emergency risk reduction and prevention now it is not just disaster reduction or prevention it is the risk of the disaster that is to be reduced and prevented you remember disaster and disaster risk okay then what are the services provided in the phase 1 rescue medical attention food uh, medical attention food water temporary shelter right all these are the things that are provided as the immediate relief operation in the intermediate phase to relief operations food water long term shelter sanitation healthcare return to the school and work all this comes under the phase 2 relief operation in the phase 3 relief operation which is the long term phase what are the services provided engagement of local population in planning and reconstruction of communities and in the phase 4 it is training policy and procedure creation relationship building among the service providers and communities okay so these are the services which are provided throughout this relief operations then media coverage just a second sorry see if you see here media coverage extensive coverage and high emotional pull when there is immediate relief operation that is phase 1 immediately after disaster occurred i gave you the example also phase 2 intermediate that is in that the coverage declines as first emergency efforts dissipate immediately when first emergency uh, services are provided the media coverage reduces phase 3 that is the long term relief operation the media coverage continues to decline and phase 4 disaster preparedness relief operation in that very little coverage or no emotional pull is there in the media coverage okay then okay so when you talk about phase one relief operation which is called the emergency relief phase so during this first phase of emergency relief victims need the minimum requirement for survival right minimum essential requirement such as food water blanket and medicines the relief effort for this phase can be prepared in advance by government agencies in advance correct phase one support may be better implemented by national or international organizations able to assemble resources from unaffected areas to those that have the knowledge and capacity to act immediately and with impact okay so phase one that is the immediate relief operations okay that is mostly provided by the support of the national and international organization in terms of food water blanket medicines proper water sanitation supply the immediate uh, essential needs okay then in this phase the most crucial issue is the operational time okay timely reaching of such uh, relief material so goods should reach the victim as soon as possible since the faster the arrival means the higher possibility to save more lives right if there is no proper water supply if there is no proper in the sense not no timely no timely food supply reaching the victims no uh, timely health uh, kits available so then the possibility of you know affecting the people will increase the period of the first phase generally takes approximately some days to a week 
After this period, it enters the second phase when some victims are able to go back to their home, while some victims whose houses were seriously damaged still remain at the shelters. So this first phase is the most important phase. Then next is the phase two, that is after this immediate, uh, you know, immediate relief phase, the intermediate phase of disaster relief, which aim at stabilization of the affected community. relief efforts for victims living at <coughs> shelters okay that is making the uh, you know stable environment and providing the relief efforts to the victims who are still living in the shelters some might have gone back to their own shelters some some whose houses are destroyed completely they might be living in the temporary shelters as well so providing the relief efforts to those people in some cases stress can lead to suicide and domestic abuse referrals to mental health professional should continue as long as the need exist reintroduce programs such as expanded program on immunization making someone immune to particular disease okay reinstate the care and treatment of chronic illness and infectious diseases such as tb hiv and aids this transition must be coordinated by the nurse and other health workers concerned then the phase 3 after phase 2 that is after intermediate phase the phase 3 is the long term phase to rebuild for a better future so the third phase which is the uh, i mean the for the for the third phase is when most victims are able to go back to home okay the third phase is maximum people can go back to their home but some need to stay longer and are moved to temporary houses still there are few people who needs to stay in the temporary houses local population are engaged in planning and reconstruction of the community uh, communities since the reconstruction is going on okay so therefore few people are still remain in the uh, temporary houses and the relief operations are to be provided to those people and local people should be engaged in this planning and reconstruction activities then phase 4 where victims resume to normal life all the affected people have resumed to their normal lives for the fourth phase although the victims have resumed to normal life they still need some support in order to restore their quality of life faster there are still some donors wishing to provide support okay there are still some people who want to provide support since that particular um area was too much affected and to restore the quality of that area the requirement of goods will be the most varied by individual needs of the victim this support might be performed directly by each pair of individual donors and victims now it is particularly specific to any person not community there might be individual need of some victim maybe some has gone to a lifelong disease some have gone to some mental issues some might have lost their property to a large extent there might be individual issues okay so support to that individual issues by individual donors or victims would be provided training policy and procedure creation relationship building among the service providers and communities is an important part of this phase 4 okay so see disaster time versus need of victims phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and phase 4 that is phase 1 which starts from life at shelter then phase 2 phase 3 where it starts at life at temporary house and phase 4 which starts at normal life and it takes time correct right? so this graph explains very easily the different phases at particular time period when the disaster occurs okay and the needs of the victims as well okay so